So now, for example, one of the stories that we're looking at here, the New York Times has now issued a note saying that it had relied too heavily on claims by Hamas in the wake of last week's hospital blast. Talk to us a little bit about the challenge in, in striking a balance between accuracy and, of course, speed when it comes to covering stories like this. Well, I think one of the problems that we all face in society is that one of the main ways that we get information in fast-breaking, fast-moving situations is social media. And, you know, every journalist is glued to it in a moment like the start of a conflict. And I think one of the problems has been that social media has been absolutely sort of, it's been a tidal wave of disinformation, seamlessly intermingling with good information. That, that makes it almost impossible to tell what's true or not. And the other problem is that the algorithms actually, they, they amplify the most controversial information, the stuff that gets us emotionally reacting. And, you know, we know that terrorist groups and uh, other extremist groups know how these platforms work. And I fear that what they've been doing is weaponizing these platforms to mislead journalists, politicians, members of the public and others into thinking things are true because they're seeing it frequently when they aren't. You know, and another uh, sort of piece of misinformation that had been circulated widely was uh, the treatment violence against babies, something that we heard from the U.S. president, in fact. And so how can media organizations and politicians then do a better job of ensuring that what we're sharing with the public, which is so critical during this time, is valid or, or that there's more transparency? Well, think about how social media works, first of all. So social media basically is a way of instantly communicating. And when it comes to finding facts, it takes time. It takes resources, expertise, effort. When it comes to making something up, that takes no time, no effort, no expertise. And so these are asymmetric battles between the truth and lies. And social media will fill up after something, you know, an emergency happens with speculation presented as fact. And that can quite often distort perceptions of what is really going on. I think that our newspapers and people who want to be taken credibly need to be much more relaxed about saying, we don't know yet. We are still establishing the facts. It is unknown. And, you know, that was true during the pandemic when we saw disinformation flood in at the start of the pandemic when scientists were scrabbling to synthesize the genome of the, of the virus, work out what on earth was going on. We see it as well when things like this happen, when, an, you know, an absolute tragedy, the, uh, the hitting of a hospital with munitions, um, wh whomsoever it was from. You know, part of, of course, the the concern here is the impact of misinformation. And there have been growing concerns about the rise of anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, as a result of this particular war and conflict. So let's talk about the impact of misinformation. Well, well I mean, th 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 this is a very perfect example of how much it can impact a society in so many ways. So from the geopolitics of you know, President Biden being being told that he was no longer going to be meet, meeting with the Jordanians who said that they couldn't do so given what they'd been hearing and seeing about the hospital bombing through to we know that there have been attacks on synagogues, on Jewish people. Um, we know that a young Palestinian American child was murdered, that these can actually have real world impacts all the way from global politics you know, impeding our ability to try and find a just solution to the problems out there, to the murder and harm to individuals. But more generally as well, it seems to be splitting our society into tribes depending on which takes on the facts you believe. Do you believe one set of facts or another set of facts? And in that respect, it's an absolute disaster because the truth is, truth still matters. And it's really important that we're patient enough and kind enough to each other to be able to take the time to find those. And finally, I wanted to ask you also about uh, advice 
for consumers of news when it comes to how they take in the information. You know, I have personally observed a lot of people uh, turning to independent journalists, for example, in some cases feeling that the narrative that they perceive as the right one is greater or has more impact or is getting louder uh, from, from those certain accounts or voices. What is important for consumers of news to keep in mind when it comes to what it is they're consuming, the platforms they're using, and the sources that they're getting this information from? So, so to, to, to those consumers of social media, there are bad actors, a whole array of them, whether they're hostile states, they are extremist groups, foreign and domestic, they are people who are farming engagement, they're trying to get as much engagement as possible by posting you know, disinformation, but, but stuff that sort of fills a, 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 a need for information that just gets engagement so they can build their follower base and make money out of that. There are just people who like to cause chaos. These four sort of big bands of, of bad actors on platforms that amplify that stuff, amplify disinformation and hate, that don't enforce their rules, on which the owner himself of one of the platforms, X, told people, don't trust the news, go and, go and watch this anti-Semite and see what he has to say, because he's better than the news is on it. The truth is that that has rendered social media kind of incomprehensible. I'm genuinely you know, an, an, an expert on these things. The truth is that when this all started, I switched on social media, I had a look at what was on there, as I have for every major news event in the last 10 years, and it was incomprehensible. It took more time to pass through what's true and what's not than it was worth. So I actually switched off social media and switched on the news, because at least there the information is well curated, timely, and fact-checked. The truth is, if you want to go on social media for information, you're on a hiding to nothing. The only thing social media will leave you is chronically disinformed.